So today we're going to investigate the flat lock or the two thread techniques. Um, I don't, most of us don't use the flat lock very often, but it's got some really interesting applications. So uh, if you're not sure what a flat lock is, whenever you go to Joann's and you see where the two bolt pieces on the bolt are sort of sewn together with these really ugly wide stitches about a half an inch thick or half an inch to three quarters of an inch thick and they're really loose and they're really ugly well that is the flat lock in its in its most ugly form <laughs> so it can be used for both mitts and uh, as well as woven with different applications um, the flat lock a lot of times in the commercial world they'll use a two thread flat lock because it almost looks the same and I'll show you when it looks the same as a three thread overlock. So for finishing seams, the factories like to save money on that one extra thread and they set up a flat lock. I, I don't, you know, I'd rather use a three thread. Um, it's really good for sportswear because it is the most stretchy of all the stitches. Uh, and I'll show you with some knit how stretchy it is. It's very, very, uh, very, very strong stitch, even though it's only using two threads. Um, so they're great for leotards and unitards, skating dresses, swimwear, you name it. Um, because you get a lot of stretch for your, for your stitch and the threads don't pop. So another thing too, whenever you do a three thread stitch, let's say or three or a four thread on a seam, you have to fold that seam over to one side. And therefore you've got a lot of bulk where you've got two pieces of fabric. One, two, nope, three pieces of fabric. You've got the front, you've got the two pieces in the back, then you've got all this stitching. So it's kind of lumpy right there. And a lot of times for sportswear, especially on the inner seam, you know, the inside leg seam, that's going to chafe. It's going to hurt. So that's why dancers like to, and they use, you also use it for lingerie, you know, stitching lingerie, because it gives you a flatter stitch. And uh, so that's why, it, and it's more comfortable to wear. Um, let's see what else um, I think that's about it so flat lock I cannot remember how to do flat lock it is my mental block uh, thank God for this <laughs> the cheat sheet because because I use this all the time for the flat lock I just can't remember it after teaching this silly class for like 18 years I still cannot remember off the top of my head how to thread this puppy for a flat lock without looking at my chart even though I, li I like there's one stitch I really really like so I'm going to find okay there is uh let's see where's flat lock yeah flat locking right here we have there's like five different variations of the flat lock you have a three thread flat lock which we we're going to start with and it can be wide or narrow doesn't doesn't really matter this one's set up for for the three thread I think it's a narrow uh, it's not showing a wide but you could do a wide I'm not sure what the settings would be we'd have to play with it because this only shows so many stitches and God knows this thing does a hundred and something stitches I don't even know how many it does I stopped counting them because it's overwhelming <laughs> I know it's well over 112 stitches I can't remember exactly I have to look it up or count them <laughs> no I don't want to do math so <laughs> So the three thread flat lock is um, least of the stretchy, but you can use a three thread flat lock. You have a two thread flat lock wide and a two thread, two thread flat lock narrow. And we're gonna do all these and you'll see the difference in them. Then we'll have my favorite stitch of all, which is the three thread blanket stitch, which you can make like a baby gift in like 15 minutes. Just go get a panel of flannel at Joann's or or anywhere that they sell, you know, flan uh, fleece fabric, and you've got you've got a gift in like 15 minutes. Let's turn it on. Right now, it's set for a three-thread narrow overlock. So I'm going to check the guide. We're going to do a three-thread flat lock. Let me see that You're right here. Okay, we're going to set the O2 needle position in which we have. I'm going to put my stitch length right here between two and three, so between about two and a half. So my blade width is between three to three and a half, so I'm going to leave it at M. 
stitch selector, which is over here, is D. Wave selector is on overlock. The subsidiary looper is disengaged. In other words, I've, and I've got my, this is up where it says looper selector, it's up. Blade position is up. Knife cover is on. Subsidiary looper, which is the safety pin looking thing, is is uh, is down. So we're not going. We're going to use it in a little bit. Okay. So and it looks like everything is there. However, let's look at this threading path. <laughs> See if we can get really close to this threading path because it looks really wild. It's like you've lost your mind. Okay. This is my lower looper thread and it's going in the correct place as normal. Nothing special. The green is the upper looper and it's going in the second one. Okay, that's normal. My right needle, which normally goes over here, is sharing with the lower looper. So we've got to move that. And if you remember how I moved it before, tap the kitty, make a loop, raise the presser foot, pull it through. Haha, <laughs> I don't have to change the needle. And then I'm going to put it into this position so that it shares. It's sharing with the upper looper. Okay, and D, I'm good to go. Okay, now this is a three thread. It, flat lock, is not a flat lock unless you can open it up. Okay, I'm gonna cut the fold because these machines work better if you let it cut something. Okay, and I'm just gonna sew. Average stitch length, nothing special. It looks like a regular overlock, like a three thread overlock. Yeah, it looks exactly like it, okay? It has a little stretch, but the magic happens in a flat lock when you pull these threads apart or pull the fabric apart. And see, now you have a nice flatter seam. It's very, very thin. And if I pull hard enough, see how you can see light through where the two pieces of fabric, what they've done is they have butted one up against the other. And that gives you your standard three thread flat lock. But it's very, very strong stitch. It will not pop. And no matter how much I pull and stretch on that, it still won't pop. So let me straighten that up nice again. So now, uh, uses for that. I don't really use this one. If I'm going to do a flat lock, I'll do a real flat lock. If I'm going to, but you could. You could. Um, here's how it looks like on the other side. You have what I call the trellis side. And you have the ladder side. I don't know if you can see. Let's try a piece of fabric with a different color where it's darker and we can see that better. This is not what it'll look like on a piece of woven. Yes, there's some fabric stuck there. I'm gonna cut that off. <laughs> okay. I think you can see this one. You can see the stitches a lot better here. Okay. See now, see it looks pretty much like a three thread here. And you, like I said, you, and it looks a lot, a little more like a V where you've got something, you've got a, there's no train tracks up going along the back. And it looks like little V's. It too is strong. When I open it up, you can really see the ladder and the trellis. Okay. This is the trellis side. And a lot of times this is done decoratively. Okay. You want to do, you'll put a pretty, like an embroidery thread, you know, a shiny rayon thread or something nice in there. And see, that looks really nice. And so now the back has got the ladder side and therefore some people will even put a piece of ribbon in here and sort of you make it like uh, fake beading lace where you go take a needle and you take a heavy piece of thread or some like eighth inch ribbon and you weave up two down two up two down two and it makes a decorative edging. So one nice thing is you can do a hem with this, let's say we're gonna turn this into a hem. What I've done is like, this is the right side of my fabric and I want this hem to be 
here, but I want something pretty there. So I'm just going to fold this accordion style with the edges there, okay? And then I want to stitch a hem. we pull it open and see now that would look cute on on the hem of a little girl's dress because then you could take a colorful ribbon and weave it in and out now if you wanted it this this to be on the right side you would actually fold the accordion last time I started the last one I took it to the back accordion folded it and then I stitched on this fold and I got the ladder stitch so I'm going to this time turn it to the front then to the back and I'm going to okay this is with the right side up this time see and this would work so now when you open up your seam I just cut the salvage edge, but you get the idea. Now your trellis edge is on the front. This one here, where you want the trellis edge on the front of the hem, it would have to be a fabric that is that looks the same on both sides. Fold forward to right sides together, then wrong sides together. Okay. And this one, I'm cutting the fold. And now when I open it, and these techniques are the same whether you're using a two or a three thread. Okay, now see, you've got the trellis edge on the right side, because these this is a batik, so both sides are the same. So that's how, but so it's more, it's great for, like, if this were a pocket, that would make a really nice, po pretend that's a pocket, okay? <laughs> that's a pocket. You can use it for lots of things. Okay, let's do a two thread. Two threads a little different. Now, uh, the big difference between the two thread, and we're going to go over this little cheat sheet. What we are doing here is I have this one's. Uh, we'll do the narrow first. Let's do this narrow one first because I don't have to change a needle, and then I'll change it to the wide. Okay, I'm using the O2 needle. My length is between three and three and a half, so I need to make that a little bit. What a longer stitch length. My blade width is at three and a half, which is an M, so it's there. My stitch selector is at B. The wave is off. The up the uh, looper selector is up. The blade position is up. The knife covers up. And look at this. That means the subsidiary looper is engaged. Now look at the difference in the threading path. Looks like it's like right here. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to kick it. This is your lower looper, and it's in position number four. This is my needle. Instead of it going, and I'm just going to leave it in where no, number this uh, third position, third slot, because it's going to be the same place where an up where a upper looper usually is. So what I'm going to do is cut away my thread from the upper looper. And I'll just sew it out. Okay, I only have two threads now. It's not going to stitch. Watch, this will not stitch if I left it like that. Okay, I'm not going to get a stitch to form. And there's times where after you flat lock, you do this, and guess what? Nothing happens. <laughs> Nothing has happened here. Like, okay, <laughs> we've got to do better than that. So now, in order to engage the subsidiary looper, this is my subsidiary looper. Okay, I'm going to turn the hand wheel towards me and clear the thread away from that upper looper. 
Okay, and then I'm going to swing this. If you have the triumph, you have to pull out this way and swing it up over. This one, I just have to flip it over. Okay, and this, this stitch is available on all the Baby Locks Jet Air Sergers, even the older ones. They still did it. Okay, and now we're ready to sew. Okay. So, it's ready to stitch. Let's see what happens. My stitch, so let me just double check these settings. Okay, stitch selector is at B. Alrighty. So let me, okay. Whoops. See how that went like that? Okay, you can avoid that by making sure your blade is all the way up before you start stitching. Because now you can get your fabric a quarter inch closer. Okay. Okay, you see it looks like that. Two thread narrow. Okay, now this is the one that I said that commercial people will use uh, this as just finishing a facing. Because, I mean, it'll do it fine. So, like, if I were, this were a facing and I wanted to finish it. You could do it on a single layer. No problem. See, so it gives you... It's just like a regular serge. Doesn't same thing. Just saving one one strand of thread. I'm not going to go to my machine to my cheat sheet and figure out how to thread this thing just to do a facing. I'll just leave it on three thread. That one sort of is, autom is automatic. Okay. Now here's the two thread we just did. It's a little easier to open, and it looks, but it looks to me the same. Let's do one the opposite way. We're going to put right so you can see. I want a dark piece of fabric. It's a dark piece. And I'm going to do wrong sides together. Now, if you want to see the trellis side, put the trellis fold to wrong sides together. If you want to see the latter side on the outside, then you put it right sides together. Okay. Again. Okay. And I just did the wrong side of it. Okay. Yeah. Did I just say? Okay, there's the, the ladder edge. And putting it wrong sides together will give me the trellis. Okay, now here's the, here's the trellis edge and see how nice it looks. But compare let's compare it to this one. Okay. It really doesn't look that different. It's a little bit lighter, but it looks the same. Functionally, I you can use these two interchangeably, no problem. Let's do a two thread wide flat lock. Okay, which is up here. Okay, so this one says we knew the 01 needle. Okay, I'll, I'll switch that in a minute. My width is, uh, length is two to two and a half, which is where I am. Okay, and the st stitch width is at 7.5, which is as wide as it will go. My stitch selector, which is over here, is on A. And the subsidiary looper is engaged. Everything else is still the same. However, our thre and the threading paths are still the same. Look at this. This is my lower looper. That's where the thread is. This is where my needle goes. But instead of it going into the O2 position, it's going to go into the O1. So I'm just going to leave it in here. I so since I don't have to re-thread this thing, I'm just going to move the needle. Okay, and for that, I'm going to grab this and this because I don't want to re-thread. some slack here. Okay, I'm going to do it the lazy way if I can do this. Loosen that one. That one. And I want to move this from here to the left position. If you go tip down first and straight up, 
and is it and and if it I can't see it even with real I can't see it anyway because I have dim eyes <laughs> but there if you look inside this little hole right here let me tighten that see there's a slot right here if you look inside you may see a glimmer of the top of the needle and this in this one I'm going to tighten both the needles and I don't have to do anything else so I'm ready to go now we will do the wide flat lock so again I'm going to do this as a wide flat lock I'm gonna do it this way okay because I want the trellis side on the outside okay it is considerably wider a whole lot wider this is approaching what it looks like when you put the bolts together see and then when you open it up okay See, that's not real pretty. It's a, to me, this is too wide. I don't like how this looks. But on the back, you could yeah, I could make your stitch length longer to use it as as beading. You could put lace inside there. The difference between the other difference between the two and the there is a difference between the two and the three thread. The two thread or three thread, the fabrics interlock one right next to another. What happens with, with this one is they slightly roll so that you have an overlap, like sort of like that. So if we pull it open, you can see how, see how you get the fold right there, and they're folded in together towards one side. Just gives you a little more coverage. Both of them work just as well. Uh, this one I don't like the looks of that so I'm not going to use this this way however first I'm going to go back to the narrow I forgot to show you what I want to show you about but another practical application of this I'm going to go back to the narrow I forgot to show you is this stitch this narrow one is actually very good for applying elastic and applying lace to like lingerie or whatever Okay. Did I get it in there right? Yep, I did. Okay, and I'm going to switch that down to B and put this on M. I might make it a little bit wider and then a two stitch length. Okay, say I want to put here's some lace into this lace. At the end of a piece of fabric, say this was like a hem or something, I wanted to say right here, okay? How am I going to line this up? Now it's set back up for a three thread narrow. I'm going to line these up so that I see a little bit of fabric. And you always have to have a lace that has a bit of a header on it. Um, you don't want to use a scalloped edge because it won't catch it. But you want, this one has a little bit, this is cheap home sew lace. But say I wanted to put this on the edge this cell usually then I'm going to your blade is on the inside of this foot right there and this is your blade is over here so I want it to cut the fabric but I don't want it to cut the lace but I want the needle to catch the lace so I'm going to stitch and I'm just cutting the fabric and not the lace or trying to, because I'm at a funny angle here. Okay. Okay. So now as I open this, you put your lace right sides together, because now if you had matching thread, there you go. Isn't that pretty? This is Now this is great for lingerie, because you can apply the lace to the bottom of a slip and yes I still use slips so you can actually make a slip using your flat lock in really maybe a half an hour and that's including cutting it out because when you make a say a half slip all you do is you measure the the width of your hips and cut it straight and then you put in elastic and you put lace at the bottom slip is done 
and that way you've got one for your height because you can't buy slips that are my height or, or, or no matter how tall you are they're always made for somebody else so this gives you a really nice lace application okay and let's just say we're going to put elastic on the other side of it and it's really wide you would never put this on lingerie I'm going to put the elastic same thing okay here's my elastic I put my fabric oh, can't see it okay there I have put I'm gonna cut the fabric I'm going to put the lace here okay now I'll put them together and I don't want to cut the lace but I do want to cut the fabric so I'm going to cut now I'm going to stretch this lace but don't ever start stretching lace until you've got at least a quarter of an inch of fabric behind the needle okay because now and usually what I do is I pull the lace anchor it on the edge so I can stretch it don't ever stretch as you start to sew or sew the end because what happens is the needle will catch the elastic and because it's not anchored in the fabric it'll snap that needle and it can actually snap back in your face so don't do that always well, let it say how let it get well caught and a lot of times I will help it through at first because at first I'm pull on the back my elastic and so now when I pull it open it is attached just like the lace and if you have the same color thread as your fabric you'll be fine and see now you've got nice edge here so it's a good way to put elastic on and it's very secure even though it's not and then here's what the other side looks like so um, I and a lot of times because I don't like that I will take this put the chain stitch on or to a sewing machine and I will pull that open and sew so like I take this to a sewing machine and if I pull this open like this then it looks like I've got a casing so right, let me show you this next one which is my favorite the blanket stitch I need to move the needle over again I'm gonna move that needle back over to that outside position and I'm going to actually take this out and I'm going to put in a top stitch needle a size 14 top stitch needle okay and I want a thicker thread so I'm going to be using this is 20 weight signature thread it's kind of thick you could go up to a 12 weight as well. I'm going to take this needle out. And loosen this. And I am using just a regular top stitch size 90 14 needle. Reason I want it. See how big. See, if I can thread it and move it easily, usually, see, if it slides, it's okay. If it, if, if it was going, if I didn't give it anything and it just slid, this actually, this needle's a little, even a little big for this thread. But that's how you can tell if your needle is big enough. So let me put this in here into the right position. needle down tip down in between the stitch fingers then tighten okay we're going to be threading for the blanket stitch and the blanket stitch is the most bizarre of all the stitching 
Okay, it's a three, two thread blanket stitch. Okay, I have the 01 needle in. Yep, length, the lot widest it will go. Longest it'll go. The width, the widest it'll go. Stitch selector at A. A, okay. And everything else is still the same. Now, this is the one lower looper is going into its normal spot up and through the looper. The needle goes into the upper looper slot. And what is this mess? Huh? Who knows? Okay. <laughs> Let's find out together. Okay, what that says to do is you're going to lock down your threading tubes. Okay, I'm going to pull this open. Okay, I am going to do the upper looper. It will not come out where it's supposed to, and that's okay. You may have to use a thread cradle if it's thicker than this. I think this will go through okay. Or not. Let's see if it tries. Come on, try. Yep, it went through, but it didn't come all the way out. So I'm going to release the tubes, and I can see that thread trying really hard to get into that upper looper. But it can't because it's not working. So I'm going to pull it out. This is the one and only time this comes up, this hook is used. So there's a hook. And then it goes up and around into the needle. This is the only stitch that this strange little hook thing is used. Okay, and now I'm going to thread the needle. And like I said, I'm using this top stitch needle. And remember, it's not one of the standard needles for this machine. This is a regular household top stitch needle. This is the strangest stitch ever seen. Okay, <laughs> it is it is strange, but it's really neat. Okay, then I need some fabric, and I'm going to use a piece of felt because this works great on fleece. Pretend this is a piece of batting, <laughs> or this is a piece of fleece. Okay, and I what I want is a layer of. This is sol the uh, Solvy or Water Soluble Stabilizer. I'm just going to cut a little strip of it. And this is the stuff we use as a topping for embroidery. If you are an embroiderer, you've got this stuff in your stash. If you're not and you don't want, you, you just want to try it. If you're not a machine embroiderer, See, here's the Solvi, and it's water-soluble. It's made of nothing but starch. And you don't want a 20-yard roll of it because it usually comes by the roll. I think at Joann's you can buy this by the yard. So if you buy a half a yard, it will cost near to nothing. It should last you forever. But store it in a Ziploc bag. Okay, so I am going to sew over the Solvi. I'm going to sew with the Solvi on the top layer. Okay, lower the presser foot and then we'll sew. There we go. Okay, and you think, eh, watch the magic. Here comes the magic. Pull the layers apart. How cool is that? Look at this awesome blanket stitch. Read them and weep. And then you just pull this salvia away. Or you could dip it, you know, a, a wet wash towel in it. And look, you have, I know it's batting. It's not fleece, but it works the same. But look at that beautiful, beautiful stitch. And using, I've done it before with regular thread, and when you take my live classes, I don't, we don't usually, I don't have you bring top stitch needles and we try it out, but you got to try this out at home, because this is just a lifesaver, and it's a game changer for baby gifts. <laughs> so, 
and so that's what here's what the back would look like you could do it in the same you could also put that same thread in the lower looper and have it look but it's going to be look more like a serger on the back there is another one that says the two thread ladder stitch well guess what the settings are identical to the two thread blanket stitch why this one is different is that okay here was the top the difference is is that you're going to put the um the salvi underneath Okay, and when you pull, see there's what the back would look like, and then you pull forward. This would be your front, and it would look like serged, but the back now has the blanket stitch. Okay, but if I didn't have this in my hand and I dropped it to the floor, I would not be able to tell you which was which because they virtually look identical. Here's the two together. They look identical to me. So, blanket stitch. Ladder stitch, they're the same things. Just matter where you put your salvi. But I love this. This is awesome. This is so much fun to do. Now let me just quickly look through some of these, these comments. Uh, let's see. Somebody's asking a question about the needle threader. Um, the needle threaders are actually... This one that I have is made by Baby Lock. And you can get one at the store. This is the Baby Lock one. And no, they don't have red. That's my own marking. There, so and then I marked the little triangle on how you use that. Um, and then I think Clover also makes ones, I think they have one available on uh, Nancy's Notions. I know there's a bunch of them, it's just that uh, this is a great needle threader. In fact, I have one at my uh, quilting machine that has I have put the string through there so I don't lose it and it's attached to the machine because that little puppy does not have a needle threader and I can't see, so that's where you get those. Okay, let me see if there's any more comments so that I get any more questions. Uh, let's see. I think that's all the questions I have going here. Have a great weekend. If I don't see you Saturday, see you later. Bye.